Hi, I'm Nathan. And I'm Leora. Uh, okay, so we'll be getting a couple of questions. What is the world of Phage Shabbat? So we are going to tell you in a sentence or two. two. It, is, <laughs> it is a very easy way for Jewish communities around the world to learn more about aphasia and disability, the challenges that these people like Eitan go through within the realms of Judaism, having aphasia and disability, and what we as a community, as a shul, can do to help support and include those more that are challenged with it. Yes. Okay, we will be sending your shul all the materials needed so that your shul rabbi, your shul representative can mention it either during announcements, during his speech, yes. her speech, and um, or a group in the afternoon. However your shul or community would like to take part, that is wonderful. We will be providing everything and all you have to do is just mention it or yes. do something bigger, whatever works you for you. Okay, that's number one. Number two, why are we doing the world of Phaedra Shabbat? So um, since we have started Koach Itan, we have gotten a lot of outreach from within the Jewish communities around the world who wanted sort of a Jewish connection within the world of aphasia and disability on different ways of how to do things that they could once do, but now they can't do. How to feel more included, how to get themselves feel more motivated to do things. Uh, so we felt that this Shabbat would be an opportune time for people to learn more about um, aphasia and disability so that we could connect with more and include more Jewish people around the world that are challenged. You will meet somebody who maybe has aphasia, maybe has a different other language or speech impairment or a disability. And it's, it's our responsibility to learn about these challenges and disabilities in order to include those people more. So we're just going to give you a couple of examples about um, people with aphasia and their challenges within Jewish communal life. So we're going to take one example. Yeah. What's one example? Let's take uh, Kiddush. Kiddush. Kiddush is something that most most people do Friday night and, and Shabbat day, and it can be really hard for somebody really hard. like Eitan, who yep. has aphasia. Um, if you don't know about aphasia, you can look on our website. There are different types of aphasia. Aphasia affects the language area, the language center of the brain, which is the left hemisphere of the brain. And because of that damage, people with aphasia can have difficulty with speech output, reading, writing, and comprehension. So speech output, when you make Kiddush, if you can't, don't have the output, wow. you don't have the Kiddush. So yeah. what do you do? <laughs> so for Eitan, Eitan has uh, broke his aphasia. For Eitan, um, Eitan can, can say Kiddush uh, for the sole reason that um, just like music is found on the other side of the brain, it's found on the right side of the brain. And music, Eitan can sing, any song that he knew before, any song. You the have words no idea. just go out of his mouth. <laughs> yep. It's like, he, huh? can't, he can't say my name sometimes, but he can yeah, sing you, to a song. You, and so, I, I don't understand. So, <laughs> right. so Kiddush, Kiddush is like that. Yeah. And so sometimes Eitan will fumble. You know, sometimes the words won't be there. And, and sometimes it'll be, you'll have a little bit of difficulty saying the, the words if they're hard words to pronounce. There's a bit of a proxy there too. So when Eitan makes Kiddush, he holds the, the bencher and he can, he'll follow with the bencher and make Kiddush. But the words are there. He, the words because they're there before. Um, if he's blessing the children, right? So that brach, that blessing that you say when, uh, when you bless the children, which Eitan used to know by heart, is there. And he, when he looks at it, he can, he can, uh, he can read in his head but he can't say the words out loud. Now, try and read and put your hand on your child's head and bless them at the same time. It's something very, very, very difficult. Yep. So that is something that sort of Ethan sort of says from his heart. Yeah, and no, 100%. With sort of looking in the, in, the, in the venture, but you know, the blessing sort of comes from his heart and yeah. not from, yeah. from the words on the page. Yeah. Um, prayer yeah. and davening <laughs> is sort of the same thing. Something like Shema, or Moda'ani, those sentences Eitan can say yes. um, out loud because it's kind of like the music, like we said before. Yes. But once you get to the silent prayer yes. that usually we say to ourselves, yes. that becomes more difficult. And that becomes a struggle that Eitan struggles with 
day in and day, day out. Day in and day out. And you, which, has, met. which has sort of I, prevented him from going to shul, but Eitan since has gone back to shul yes. uh, about a month and a half ago, five he, and a half years after Eitan's stroke, which yeah. is super, super amazing. Yeah. And, um, and we have now asked, because Eitan got the confidence to ask two friends of his, Eitan also has a disability. He lost one of the use of his right arm. So try putting tefillin on with one arm. Yeah. That's really hard. Yeah. So Eitan has since asked um, a couple of friends to help him with that mission. And they have become and, no. the tefillin, tefillin putter also, honors. Simon, Simon David, and, and, David. And, and Eitan's father and sometimes. Father. Yeah. Um, and they help Eitan put on tefillin. Not because they feel bad for Eitan or they you know, think he's in his skin. No. Because they know that Eitan wants to daven and they are going to help him do it. And also, for example... I can't remember the the name or the uh, and and it's very very frustrating. And Eitan mentioned something today, which is which is really fascinating. Um, that he didn't want to tell me, but he did tell me. So we're going to let you on this. Um, Eitan um, to put on the tefillin, they say the bracha first, and Eitan repeats it, and that's super amazing. Um, he also led me in a little secret that. We mentioned that the silent part of davening is is hard. Um, Simon and, and uh, David don't really realize it, but when they daven, they daven and they pray. They pray out loud, and that helps Eitan pray as well because he's listening to their prayer, their davening, and that is something so beautiful. But just think about that: if if somebody with aphasia had somebody davening next to them out loud. They could be benefiting from that, and that's something that that I learned today, which is amazing. Yeah. And all of these things we learn day in, day out since Eitan's stroke, and they're such valuable tools yeah. that we want to share them with you, the community, the, the kila, or people that 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 have aphasia. All of us together need to work together to include all the peoples that are challenged day in and day out in Judaism involves so much conversation and reading and comprehension and understanding. Yeah. Eitan has a very hard time learning something <laughs> that he did day in and day out. Day, day in and day out. And Eitan also has um, a very little memory pre-stroke, so that also is affecting um, the learning and the doubting and the prayer. But if we don't take the time to understand what these people are going through, then how are we supposed to help them? Yeah. And it's as true. rabbis and leaders and even community members, friends. We have to take the time to learn and understand. Take Kiddush, for example. Kiddush, the guys, everyone to have a time together, even the yeah. girls, even me. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. We all like no. to have that it's shot good. together after shul sure. or, or just that social connection and conversation. But if everybody is talking all at once, Eitan's going to go into another room. Yep. If the people, if the guys don't engage Eitan, which they totally know how to do now, and they're superstars because they know that they have to work extra hard to engage, to include, to make sure he's not zoning out because no one's talking to him, to come over on Shabbat and visit because sometimes Eitan's not going to go to them because it's frustrating to go to somebody if you can't yep. initiate that conversation or yep. that visit. And so... This, Shab this is what this Shabbat is all about. It yeah. is to teach um, teach everyone to share and discuss yep. more ways that we can include yes. and that we can help people that not only have aphasia, a word that so many people don't understand, a word that is so... It's a disability that is so frustrating, Debilitating. isolating, debilitating. And if we can't understand then we won't be able to help them. Maybe. And if we do understand, then they're just everyday people like Maybe. you and me because of yeah. Asia you can't see. Yes. And um, you need, we know a lot of people who don't leave their house. They just don't go out because they're shy, they want to hide, they're embarrassed, and that's that's just not the way it should be. Yeah, It should be discussed, it should be part of conversation, it should become as normalized as we can. Every disability should become normalized in whatever way we can help it be normalized. And so this is what this Shabbat is trying to teach everyone, um, just different ways which all the Jewish communities yeah. around the world can Bidik. learn about the struggles and challenges yes. that people go through within Jewish you know, everyday life and on Shabbat. So if you so, haven't registered or want to join, just reach out. We'll reach tell you out. how to do it. 
It's very simple, very easy. And just thank you, thank you, thank, thank you, you, thank you, thank you very much. Thank you for making this happen. Yep. All of you who are registered so far, thank you. And we are looking forward to it. You got it. Thanks. You got it. Have a great day. Bye-bye.